Zach Hyman hits 50. It is hometown against his old team. What a story that would be. We're going to get you set for the Oilers of the Maple Leafs right here on the Oil Stream pregame show. Good evening, everybody. Tom Gazzola with you live on location, Hudson's White Avenue, as we're anticipating a good turnout for the EST watch party. Oilers and Leaves from Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, the most important place in the hockey universe. I say that facetiously. Uh, join the conversation, 780-218-9999, or via the Nasty Chat. And if you want to, join us here at Hudson's White Ave. Should be a great time. I see a lot of tables being reserved for some nasties, and uh, a lot of people just want to watch the Oilers and the Leafs on a Saturday night in spring. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. Come on down and uh, let's have some fun. I do not know what's going on behind me. <laughs> if you're watching, uh, I apologize. Uh, hopefully it's all, yeah, it's all good there. And if you're listening, feel free to text us. Uh, let's bring in YouTube Trev. Where is that guy? He's back at the ESTHQ. Hey, buddy. How's it going, Tommy? I'm doing good, pal. Look at you. Look at you, buddy. Look at this. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. How goes it? It's uh, it's been a pretty eventful day at the EST Global HQ headquarters. I guess. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why? Packages well, just coming in. No, exporting, I, importing, I, importing, I, exporting. I guess more so just uh, you know, we have the fine show Hello Hockey on Saturdays that uh, a few yes. of you nasties you know know about. Um, so yeah, we had that this morning. It was another great show as always. And then uh, yeah, I stayed here for uh, you know, get ready for show prep for pre and post. And yeah, I watched a little bit of the. Uh, Flyers Bruins game wasn't the the greatest game, but eh, whatever it was hockey, so I don't mind it. But uh, yeah. tell you what, I'm just like the nasties tonight. I cannot wait for uh, the one that uh, we're getting you set for. It's it's gonna be awesome. So it's uh, I can't wait, Tommy. It's gonna be good. Hey, you know what? It should be a lot of fun, and uh, very much looking forward to uh, this evening. Nick Alberga will be joining us from Leafs Morning Tea, as well as NHL Fantasy on Ice. Uh, Nick is a paisan good friend and uh he spent some time on Sportsnet, and then i think where else was nick nick nick's been around for for quite a while covering uh, the nhl and the leafs so he does work with the nhl and then uh, he's got his uh, morning show leafs morning tea and he'll give us the scoop on the toronto maple leafs uh who the oilers will look to sweep for the first time as jack michaels put it since uh 2002 2003 so it's been a, a while 21 years uh, since Edmonton had the season series sweep and uh, we'll to make it happen tonight. Uh, let us know your thoughts uh, heading into this one. And uh, I'll throw the question of the night. I just said it in the top of the show when I got the little liner in there. Uh, does Zach Hyman hit 50 tonight? Yes or no? Simply put, I want to hear from you. Needs two to make it happen. It's in his hometown against his former team. Do you think a lot of Leafs fans in attendance will cheer him, boo him? What's it going to be like? Zach, Zach to come. I was talking with him a little bit. He's already here. He kind of shared his thoughts on that. YouTube, Trev, what say you? Do I think Zach Hyman will score 50 tonight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Uh, I, I can't help but not think that he does, Tommy. I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being hopeful just because of what a cool story that would be. At the end of the day, he will make 50 goals. You know, that's you know, we, we know he's going to do 50 goals unless something crazy happens. Mm -hmm. But tonight in Toronto, Knock on wood. sometimes these things, they just write themselves. I honestly could see that. Um, you know they're going to be giving him the puck at every opportunity, oh. right? They, they're they're going to want him to get 50. But um, there's that to it. But you also got to look at it, right? There's a, This is a big two points tonight. So, you know, can they – I think, you know, at the end of the day, they want this win more than uh, they want to get Zach Hyman 50 goals in Toronto. So – uh, I think that's kind of like a adage. They'll be like, okay, let's get the dub first. But, you know, if we can get Zach Hyman 50 and the win, like that's that's just crazy. So it's uh, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable the season that he's putting up. And just looking at it, Tommy, like the last few seasons, you know, just being an Oilers fan, my well, growing up, you know, being an Oilers fan and just cheering, you know, you don't really – this team didn't have a lot of crazy goal scores. And then you just look at the last few years, uh, Leon got his 50 and then he got 52 and then he got 55. And then uh, Connor McDavid with the, uh, you know, the crazy season that he had last year getting um, 64 goals. So super impressive. And, you know, it's just, I guess the point I'm getting at, it's just, we we've gotten blind to the fact that it's just happened quite, it's on the regular now, right? Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. like, Oh, it's a 50 goal season, but it's actually insane that the fact when Leon first, did it i was like holy crap the oilers have a 50 goal score in leon dry that is insane 
And now uh, they they could have that in Zach Hyman, which they will. And who knows? He could get more than 55 goals, which was what Leon got. So it's it's just insane how like incredible of a season he's having. Uh, I I do think you know what I, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna say yes I do think he gets 50 because why not? It would just be so cool. If, if I'm wrong, whatever he's gonna get it eventually. But yeah. I, it just no, it would be so cool, Tommy. Well said. Well said, YouTube Trev. Uh, I think he gets it. That's the question of the night. Do you think Zach Hyman hits 50 tonight against his old team in his hometown? Yes, no, maybe so. We want to hear from you, 780-218-9999. Or if you're watching on YouTube, let us know in the nasty chat. Like, share, subscribe. Please hit that thumbs up button on your way in to the show. Uh, We appreciate that so very, very much. Zach Hyman could be the... First Oilers player wearing number 18 since Craig Simpson to score 50 goals in a season. Simpson did it 87, 88, spent a good chunk of that year or part of it with the Pittsburgh Penguins. That was a Paul Coffey trade and uh, had a monster season. Oilers winding up winning the Stanley Cup against the Boston Bruins in five games. Uh, Actually, it was technically four, but they did play five. Uh, The blackout lights go out at uh, Boston Garden, so they ended up playing game four at the Coliseum. And they said if they needed a game seven, it would happen in Boston. So that was an interesting one. The last time Gretzky won a cup and uh, Craig Simpson was on Gretzky's line. So number 18 in orange and blue tonight could be the night. Another 50 goal scorer in that number. Best number in the world, in my opinion. Just saying. It's a solid number. I love number. Eight. That's my number. 18? 18. Yeah. Big Craig Simpson guy over here back in the day. It's a uh, it's a good number, Tommy. I will say. Uh, That's good. Thank you. Four Oilers. There was uh, the only other Oiler I can think of really that had it was James Neal. James Neal, Craig Simpson, Simpson, Zach Hyman, Ethan Morrow. Ethan Morrow. Okay, that was a little bit before me, but yeah, solid number. Uh, pretty good players that have donned that uh, number, including yeah. Tom Gasola. Yes, not for the Oilers, obviously, uh, but. We'll see if Zach Hyman can do it tonight. Let us know your thoughts. 780-218-9999. I like this one from Roland via the inbox. It says, would Zach Hyman or any forward score 50 goals on Austin Matthews' wing? Roland, I like that. Well, Matthews, uh, a excellent goal scorer. Probably the best one in the NHL right now, obviously, leading the league in goals. Uh, not so much in assists. And would anybody get 50 on Matthews' wing? Probably not, because he's the finisher there, and uh, he likes to take the shot. So, Roland, my guess would be no. Probably not. Um, That's what I would say. Uh, But if anybody wants to take a crack at Roland's question, go for it as well. Would Zach Hyman or any forward score 50 goals on Austin Matthews' wing? Let's hear from you. Ooh, I like this one. Hello, Redbeard. Redbeard says, aloha, Tommy from Maui. Coming through nice and clear. Hyman hat trick tonight. Book it. Red beard. Oh, red beard. I bet the weather's fine. Probably have some sand in your toes. The whole family's relaxing, enjoying a cerveza, probably maybe a tropical beverage of some sort that came in a hollowed out fruit, a cantaloupe, I don't know, pineapple, coconut, something like that. Uh, Very jealous, Scott, that you are enjoying from Maui, but very cool to hear and see that uh, we're coming in nice and clear. That's what we do around here. We're your clear choice. Uh, 780-218-9999. Let's get two lineups. And then Nick Alberga from Leafs Morning Tea will be joining us to give us the scoop from the Toronto perspective for the Oilers. This comes via Jack Michael. Says uh, McDavid between Dreisaitl and Hyman. Nugent Hopkins between McLeod and Fogel. Adam Henrique with Evander Kane and Corey Perry. And then on the fourth line, Sam Carrick with Matthias Janmark and Connor Brown. On defense for the Oil, Ekholm with Bouchard. Nurse with Vinny DeHarnay, who's back in action. Brett Kulak paired up with Cody Cece. That means Troy Stetcher, who had a good showing the other night against Buffalo. And a lot of Oiler fans have really liked lately, and that's good. Small sample size, but good, promising things that we're seeing from Stetcher. And that's a good thing. Good problem to have. Uh, He will be out tonight. Derek Ryan, the other scratch for Edmonton. As for the Maple Leafs, you've got Austin Matthews between Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi. John Tavares with Matthew Nyes and William Nylander. Pontus Holmberg centering Bobby McMahon and Nick Robertson. Then David Camp centering Connor Dewar and Noah Gregor, who uh, had a few chipped teeth. I saw uh, Jason with his nephew. Uh, Nice photo together. And he said that uh, Noah's no worse for wear outside of some 
chip teeth from Tom Wilson. Stupid play by Tom Wilson. And uh, Noah will get some new, fresh jibs done up by the Leafs team dentist. And he'll look just fine. Maybe even better than before. Uh, on defense for the Leafs, Morgan Riley with Jake McCabe, Joel Edmondson with Timothy Lilligren, and Simon Benoit with Connor Timmins or Simon Benoit. Uh, Alberga says you can say it either way. Out for the Leafs, uh, Ryan Reeves, day-to-day -day undisclosed, Ilya Labushkin, day-to-day -day illness, Kelly Yarncroke, IR with a hand injury, Mitch Marner, day-to-day -day sprained ankle, Mark Giordano, IR concussion, John Klingberg, IR hip, Matt Murray, IR Hip and Jake Muzzins on the IR has been all season. Let's go to starting goalies now for the Edmonton Oilers. 25-year-old Stuart Skinner getting the call. 31, 13, and 4. Record 258 GAA. 908 save percentage. Two shutouts in 49 games for Stuart Skinner uh, versus the Leafs. Skinner 2-1 and one rec record. Lifetime uh, 336 goals against average. 891 save percentage in three appearances versus Tirana. As for the goaltender at the other end of the rink, we're anticipating Ilya uh, Sabsidov getting the nod, the 27-year-old, 18-6-7 with a 3-12 goals against average, 8-8-8 save percentage, two shutouts in 33 games this season. Uh, uh, Sabsidov 0-1 with one OT loss versus Edmonton, 571 GAA, 842 save percentage and three career appearances versus the Oil. All right. 780-218-9999. Uh, Nick Alberga will be joining us shortly. Trev, unless he's ready to go, Trev, is he ready to go? Uh, yeah, just calling them right now, Tommy. Okay, sounds good. We'll get to Alberga right away. Let's go and take a look at the nasty chat, see what's going on over there. See the Wolves checking in. Ow! Uh, Zedmo says Tahiti treat. Gret scored 27 once. Oh, what are you talking about, Zedmo? Uh, Taylor from Indiana. Skinner in tonight. Yes, Confirmed, Taylor. Joel, uh, good day, Joel. Uh, oh, Taylor from Indiana. YTT, so handsome. Oh, very nice. Uh, McJesus texting in via the nasty chat says, the Oilers are probably the only team with four guys who have scored 50 after Hyman does it. Uh, Jody says, Oilers potentially could have a 50 or 55, a 40, a 30-goal scorer, and a couple of 20 goal scores this season. Yes, indeed, Jody. Uh, JS. JS returns. Go Canucks, go. They play the Flames tonight. Uh, hello, JS. Uh, I see you tuning in. Appreciate that. Uh, Taylor says, you guys have so many American fans. I spoke to this IU hockey videographer, and he said he's listened to EST many times. That is awesome. I love to see that. Uh, Jenna says, imagine if you met Nick Alberga and he was doing algebra in Alberta, wild scene. Jenna, only you, only you would come up with that. Um, let's see here. Greg's says preview game for the cup series. Seriously, it would be the most entertaining cup series possible. And then clomp sauce, uh, with three laughing emojis says 1967. This ain't the year. VR Montenegro. Hello, Mike says, good afternoon. Nasty. Let's go to our good friend, Nick Alberga, who's not from Alberta. As I found out this afternoon from the province of Quebec, I thought he was a Toronto boy. What's up, Paisan? How you doing? Long time no talk. Hey, buddy. Great to hear that voice. Yeah, it's fantastic. Every time I get trolled on social media for being a, you know, it's a Toronto-centric dude, I have to remind people that I'm actually from Quebec. But uh, I don't know about you. I'm looking forward to this one. I just filed a, like, why the hell not bet. So I got Hyman, or well, two goals or more. I got Matthews with a hat trick. Plus 1,100 for the Matthews hat trick, Ooh. by the way. Oh, you're really <laughs> stirring the pot with our listeners. Uh, Oil Country does not like that. They'll be saucy about it. But uh, I like that's up. That's right up your alley, man. I know you like to do that. So, and that's why we love you very, very much. Uh, what's going on around Toronto? Are people starting to think that this Leafs team is a cup contender again? What's going on there? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating, right? Um, I, I think they get that feeling every year. You know, I sort of laugh on our show on a daily basis. I recall this last springtime, the Leafs won a playoff series for the first time in like two decades. And we partied on King Street West like it was uh, 2005 again, which is hilarious. And I'll always remember it because I was actually partying with Devontae smith Belly, who won a Stanley Cup in the last like five years. Wow. And he was he was like, my goodness, what are you guys doing? But I'm like, dude, it's been a long time. But 
Yeah, there's certainly a, a distinct feel. I think it's more so like excitement because, you know, similar to your market, and I know you guys uh, really struggled in the first month and a half of the season before really, really getting going, obviously, here. It's almost like a foregone conclusion every season, Tommy, that you're going to the playoffs. And it feels like every year just waiting to get to the playoffs. And it's crazy to suggest we're a month away from that happening, right? I know. I know. Uh, as I was asking you that question about the Leafs being a contender, a bartender here just started shaking his head as he was pouring a drink. He's like, <laughs> no, no, they're not. <laughs> With a big smile on his face. Uh, Tom Gazzola live on location, Hudson's Wet Avenue. We've got our EST watch party. A few AM nasties have already shown up and a lot of table reservations. Nick, I wish you were here. This is a great time. Uh, White Avenue. You want to talk about crazy parties during cup runs or playoff series? This was uh, a zoo back in 2006 and uh, downtown's kind of taken away from that white Ave is kind of towards the uh, university of Alberta. There's a lot of cool shops and stuff, but uh, it's still a lot of fun down here. And I think you would love it very, very much. Uh, okay. Let's, let's take a look at this team, Nick. I know there's a ton of injuries. I was going through the lineups today and then uh, the injuries and guys not playing. How is this team making it work right now with no Marner? I saw, you know, Reeves is banged up, although his, impact every game is you know depends on the night and how many minutes he actually plays but Giordano's out uh you know who else there's a bunch of injuries but how are they getting through all of this is it just Matthews and, and Nylander carrying the load with uh, Tavares chipping in from time to time it really has been patchwork like uh, you know we were talking about this on on yesterday's show how like maybe a month ago everybody's like well if you stop the core four you're going to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then evidently enough, Tommy, over the last month and a half, the depth scoring has actually been the big story of this team. I get it. Austin Matthews has 57 goals. You know, Mitch Marner is out of this lineup. John Tavares has been on fire. I mean, rumors of his demise, again, greatly exaggerated. It happens every year as eight points in the last three games. Nylander became the seventh player to 90 points uh, a couple games back. But I think the biggest story for me heading into this one tonight, and we'll see if he plays because he's actually under the weather, but Tyler Bertuzzi, Finally starting to streak in the right direction after a very, very slow start to the season. Max Domi coming off a four assist game. That line in general, again, if Bertuzzi plays tonight, watch out for them. They had a really, really good game against the Washington Capitals on Wednesday combined for 10 points. Uh, Bob McMahon has been really, really hot as of late. The depth scoring, to me, in general, has been a big story that's not really been covered with this Leafs team the last little while. And, and that, as you guys know in Edmonton, I mean, when you add depth and length to that lineup, you're so much harder to play. Like, I obviously, you yeah. got McDavid, you got Drysaddle, you got others. But when your fourth line is chipping in, now Connor Brown's got a couple goals. Like, it just makes – it adds another dimension, if that makes sense, to the Maple Leafs squad. Absolutely, it does. Uh, the guys that are out, I'll go over it again for the Leafs. Reeves, Labushkin, <clears throat> Yaron Croak, Marner, Giordano, uh, Klingberg's been out forever. Murray, I guess he's been skating lately. I don't know if that matters – much at all. And uh, I know Muzzin's been banged up for a really long time. So that's kind of a non factor there. But the depth scoring, you know what? That's funny, Nick, you bring that up because earlier today I was talking with uh, Sean Bell when we were doing Hello Hockey and we had just finished up. And, and I was like, you know what, Belzy? It's, it's interesting to see how different the bottom six here in Edmonton is at the start of the year compared to right now and how much it has improved. And it's, you know, I, I, in our line of work, Nick, you get caught up on the day to day. But then when you, you yeah. know, zoom out a little bit and, t and take a look at the big picture and see the evolution of teams as the season progresses, uh, it's, it's kind of neat to look at. So uh, the Leafs obviously have had players in and out of the lineup all season long, and uh, you look to build up uh, come playoff time in the stretch drive. Speaking of that, the story of seasons uh, for every team are certainly different. There was a time, I think it was heading into the All-Star break, where Sheldon Keefe was kind of on the hot seat. Where are things now? With, with the head coach of the Maple Leafs? It's uh, it's simmered a bit, but I, I will say there's a lot of contention within Leafs Nation. Um, and I think the common argument as to why it's never the time to change the head coach, it's because look at his point percentage. Look how effective he's been in the regular season. Well, I'm happy we're having this conversation because the Oilers are a perfect example of obviously the previous administration and Jay Woodcroft and the winning percentage, one of the best of all time, period. And they still decided to make a coaching change. And look at what Chris Knobloch has done with his team. Now, I mean, the yes. jury will come out, obviously, in the Stanley Cup playoffs, a different animal, a different story. Uh, I probably side with, I think it's time for a coaching change. Having said that, um, you can't argue with the regular season success, but I want to see it in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And 
I know Sheldon Keith just got an extension. Um, I don't put much stock in that these days in the NHL, especially an organization like the Leafs. Like they can pay them to go away if they want. And, and that's my curiosity as we get set for the postseason here, Tom, is like if the Leafs have a quick first round exit again, I do think Sheldon Keith and his job could be in jeopardy. Considering I can't remember a time in recent memory where there's been this many really, really strong you know, free agent head coaches, uh, you know, Joe Quenville's a name I think is going to come out there in the next couple months. Maybe he returns to the NHL, um, yeah. Craig Berube and, and others. Like there's so many polarizing names. And I think that could be the next look for the Maple Leafs. Obviously in the Brad Tree living area is going to more of like a veteran coach who's been there before. Who knows, how to, you know, to do it in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's all I can logically think about. But to answer your question, uh, I think that conversation has simmered a bit, but uh, certainly on the back burner, we'll call it. Yeah, a uh, good point about the contract status not really being a factor in, in making coaching moves in the NHL. That's kind of a problem for the owner who has to pay out the contract unless the guy gets another deal somewhere else. Speaking of that, Nick, and I want to float it by you, there is a former mm-hmm. Oilers coach that's still kicking around town here in Edmonton, Jay Woodcroft, great winning percentage, uh, won a bunch of playoff series, took the team to the conference final two years ago. You know, I'm sure there's chatter about him in Ontario. I've heard some stuff about Ottawa, but is he a name? or a person that might be a, a contender for a job should Sheldon Keefe uh, be removed from his position and role with the Leafs? I, I would think all hands on deck. Um, obviously, you know, this conversation is, is pretty early to have, but I think you have to start thinking about him considering um, they've been unable to get the job done in the Stanley Cup playoffs, right? And now it's not your guy anymore. And I, your guy I'm talking about, uh, obviously, Sheldon Keefe, or it's Brad Tree Living coming in. And you have to think the writing could be on the wall, although Keefe said, or excuse me, both sides said that the right thing last summer and it's been a pretty up and down roller coaster type season. But I, I think at the very least they would sniff around. You talk about Woodcroft being a local product, but I, I'm mm-hmm. just thinking out loud, if I'm Brendan Shanahan, you know, if, if I'm Brad Tree Living, I want, you know, and this is with the duest respect, I just mentioned Jay Woodcroft, his record, his point percentage. I probably want somebody who has been there before, um, who can handle the heat a bit you know, easier or better, if you want to call it that, and somebody who has won. Like, I, I think it's obviously so cliche to talk about it, but sometimes you need that type of guy to put you over the top, whereas, like, both guys yeah. in both scenarios were, like, pretty green to the NHL level, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a fair point. Totally valid. Nick Alberga joining us now here on the Oil Stream pregame show, live on location, Hudson's White Avenue. We're having our EST watch party. Come on down. Uh, Vance Van Vandervan just showed up. Good to see him. Richard has shown up and uh, a couple of nasties getting down here early. Uh, Zach to come also in tow. And uh, we have a big table for our EST crew and it's going to be a fun night down here. You can text us 780-218-9999. And if you're watching, hit us up in the nasty chat on YouTube. All right. Nick Alberga, host of Leafs Morning Tea and NHL Fantasy on Ice with us to give us the Leafs perspective. Uh, Nick, we're talking about uh, Zach Hyman, obviously, <laughs> and uh, yeah. on the cusp of 50 and a lot of chatter about him getting it tonight. Do you think it happens? And what is the reaction around Toronto uh, in regard to Hyman and everything he's been able to accomplish here in Edmonton? Well, as you know, and maybe you don't know because you're out west, it, it's it's been pretty much a civil war since whatever happened last spring with Kyle Dubas, where like one oh, side said, oh. okay, it, 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 it was time for a change. The other side, like they, you know, Max Stone is the worst player in the world. Tyler Bertuzzi is the worst player in the world. So you got that side. And then you got like, I guess the anti of that side, which I probably fall on where it's like, I wasn't a big fan of Kyle Dubas and granted it's early, but not really a big fan of what he's doing in Pittsburgh right now. And I, no. you know, he's like, he's almost like David Koresh, that guy. It's bizarre. Um, <laughs> I, I think the big, the, the big conversation here the last two weeks, man, honestly, has been like, how could you let Zach Hyman slip away? Having said that, hindsight's twenty twenty. Now that I'm defending Kyle Dubas, but like, how in your wildest dreams could you have predicted this guy be a 50-goal scorer? I've watched a lot of Weathers games this season. Uh, you know, the one thing I love about um, Zach Hyman, he's such a throwback in like all his goals. The majority of them come in the blue paint, around the blue paint, yes. like... He's the prototypical guy you want in the playoffs, which, again, is ironic because the Leafs struggle in the playoffs. And I just think he's going to score. He, he's more, you know, he's more able to score that dirty goal when you need it. And uh, even that goal there yeah. tonight was like typical Zach Hyman on the tip. Like, that's what you need in the postseason. But 
rest assured, it is a massive conversation. And, uh, you know, a polarizing theme the last couple of years, when players come back and play in Toronto, they always seem to score. It happened earlier this year with a couple different guys, uh, Ryan O'Reilly and guys like that. And um, I wouldn't be shocked. I would not be shocked if he gets to 50 tonight. And quite frankly, I think he might get an ovation. They love him here. I was going to say, like, he, he doesn't get booed. I mean, how can you get mad at a guy that writes children's books and owns an eSport no. team and scores No, like, Harmon's so likable. He, he's so likable. Like, everybody understood why. Like, who wouldn't, you know, A, take the money he was given and, and in retrospect, mm -hmm. steal the deal, and B, like, sign up to play the next five, six, seven years with Connor McDavid. Like, it was a no-brainer, and you're so right. Like, typically when players leave a market, like, hell, even one of my favorites, Ryan O'Reilly, left this team last year, although it was, like, a, a quick, you know, stint, and people hate him here. I'm like, no. Like, some players, you know, it's different situations for different players. Zach Hyman wanted to stay, but I think every everybody understood why he left, and quite frankly, I think mm -hmm. you're so right. It's, it's tough to hate the guy, A, because of the way he plays and, and the way he conducts himself, too. Yeah, absolutely. He's a... Uh... Stand-up guy off the ice and uh, does his work on the ice and is being rewarded for that handily this season. Uh, Nick Alberga comparing uh, Kyle Dubas fans to Branch Davidians, <laughs> which is they absolutely are. brilliant and terrible in the same <laughs> in the same breath, which is great. Uh, Dude, it's wild! Nick. It's wild! I have friends who will die for that guy. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Uh, why? You're crazy with it. People love Kyle like, Dubas, and I do not understand why. Well, listen, like he he had a, a really good team with the Leafs, but like you said, uh, just the one playoff series win takes the the money and runs in Pittsburgh. And listen, I know he's not in an easy spot with the end of the Crosby, Malkin, Latang era, but uh, some of the additions he's made, like, ugh. but he's got six more years of runway to work with, and what did he get forty something million dollars? So. Good on him for making it work. Uh, you don't get paid what you are worth. You're paid what you negotiate, Nick, as they say. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dubas uh, certainly making that work for him, for sure, in Pittsburgh. Uh, all right. What are we going to see tonight on the ice between these two teams? You know, it's interesting, right? Because uh, a lot of people thinking it's going to be high scoring. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if it's like that playoff deal. And I think if you're the Leafs, knowing that Mitch Marner's not playing, and I understand you have some other big, big guns on the ice, I think the biggest key, obviously, is to try your best to stay out of the penalty box, number one. We know both power plays very, very potent. Uh, having said that, the Leafs' power play has really, really struggled in the last 11 games, and Edmonton speak for itself. So, I think I'm expecting, and probably famous last words, a low-scoring type game. And, and I hate to say that because it's going to be Hockey Day in Canada and everybody just wants to see Matthews, Hyman, and others and, you know, McDavid go at it. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked if we saw the under. And I just wanted to add, I talked to my boy Adam Henrique the other day. He happened to be in Edmonton, happened to be part of this run. And I think he's uh, fully understanding that Edmonton's a lot different than Anaheim in respect to getting tickets for people. It's much harder, he was saying, than it was uh, when he was back with the Anaheim Ducks. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, Touche. Speaking of that, uh, apparently it's like yeah. 750 bucks per ticket for players uh, yeah. going to Toronto. Yeah. So it's it's super expensive. Like, get, what would tonight's game be costing people? Dude, I you know, it's funny you ask that because I've had a couple people reach out and I'm like, man, like this is the tough, hardest ticket in town for the weekend, especially with McDavid. And I, I have no clue. Like, I'll be frank in saying I – don't go to games very often. I went to one last year and it was the Anaheim Ducks and I didn't pay <laughs> to catch my drift. So uh, yes. I, I tried to be that sneaky dude again and reach around. It's like no chance in hell. Um, it's a hot ticket <laughs> and it's exciting, man. It really is exciting. You know, I know I cover the Maple Leafs, but the fact that uh, a Canadian team hasn't won the Stanley Cup since 1993, weirdly enough, I was like four. I was in Montreal. I don't recall any of it, but I think it'd be really, really cool. And I think for the first time in a while, there's like legitimate, legitimate teams that can win the cup this year. Like taking nothing away from yeah. Toronto. They're a good team, especially in the West. You got Vancouver, you got your Whalers, like Winnipeg's a juggernaut. Like I I'm really, really excited. And at some point, um, you know, the streak's got to end and a Canadian team's going to hoist Lord Stanley finally. Yeah, that would be great to see. 93, the Habs got it done, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see if uh, maybe something changes this year. Uh, Nick, always a pleasure, Paisan. Great to hear from you, and uh, way to stir it up, as always. You know I love it, and I'll talk to you soon, my friend.
Always on the grind. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the game tonight, buddy. That is Nick Alberga, uh, Leafs Morning Tea, and you can catch him uh, NHL Fantasy on Ice uh, through the NHL uh, website, all their digital, and the uh, NHL Network uh, certainly doing great work over there. Nick, excellent, not afraid to step into it and uh, get people going. I like that. Uh, do you do you know David Koresh, Trev, and the Branch Davidians? I can't say I do, Tommy. I'm sorry. Wait, it's Waco, man. It was uh, it was a cult. And uh, they went down with a big fight against uh, the American government, and it was not pretty. Lots of people died, but it was a cult that, uh, you know, they thought that, uh, I want to say it properly, uh, the Branch Davidians believed that David Koresh, who self-proclaimed himself like the next messiah, and, and he had, I don't know, a hundred and something people, kids, young, old, and uh, yeah, it did not end well. So uh, that's... The fanaticism, Alberga was trying to make a point of saying that some have for uh, Kyle Dubas. It is. And Alberga just goes to the extreme with yeah, it. Yeah, okay, I get that now. Yeah, it is weird that yeah. uh, Kyle Dubas does have that kind of impact to a lot of uh, Toronto Maple Leafs fans. I don't know. I, I There's no real proof in the pudding. And as far as what I've seen in, in Pittsburgh, he hasn't done anything really there. So yeah. I'm not I'm not big on Dubas personally, uh, but... Apparently, some people are. Yeah, well, according to Alberga, for sure. So we'll see. I mean, he's got a lot of time and uh, sounds like he has the support of the Penguins uh, ownership group. And uh, we'll see where he takes that Penguins franchise. Again, they're in a tough spot, but um, yeah, they've made some really, really weird decisions, uh, especially lately. I, I, Ron Hextall didn't leave a lot there. And then Dubas comes in and he's trying to tweak it on the fly and make the most of the last few years of Malkin Crosby and Latang. All right. I've got some texts that I want to get to keep those coming in 780-218-9999. And then of course, if you're watching on our EST YouTube channel, you can get at us in the nasty chat. Uh, I do need to tell you that portions of this hour brought to you by 100.3, the bear Edmonton's best rock catch Dustin Nielsen with Yukon Jack and Scott McCord weekday mornings. And check out our dear friend, Jess Jackson, on your way home from work every afternoon. 100.3, Edmonton's best rock. Great to be uh, in a partnership with them. We always loved them when we were back at our old station. Uh, they were our good, good friends. And uh, glad to be chatting with and about them yet again. All right. I promised I wanted to get to some texts. And I see a few that have come in. The Wolf says, hello, nasties. First breakfast and now lunch. Anyone hungry? Because I'm still eating that Toronto fear coming from the fans down in T.O. Tommy Rubella getting in here. Tommy Rubella, oh, Vance Van Vandervan. As soon as I said Tommy Rubella, he got a big smile on his face and he turned and looked says, Tom, what are the odds of Vance Van Vandervan wetting his pants during the watch party? He says they're pretty good. Nine out of ten chance. All right. You're going to have you're going to have a night. Your night's going to slap, and it's going to end with wet pants. Good luck, Vance Van Vander Van. I've got a GC for that guy. I'll tell you what. Tommy Rubella, he'll be just fine tonight. Uh, this one from Shag says, hot take alert. X leaf Connor Brown, not Zach Hyman, is the oiler to score two goals tonight. Let's go, boys. Good to hear from you, Shags. And then Sheldon, not in a white garbage truck, says, the Branch Davidians. That's funny. <laughs> Oh, it's so grim too. It's so grim too soon happened like 30, 31 years ago. I think that was 93 or 94, but, uh, yeah, uh, there's a great documentary on it. I think it was on Netflix. If you want to study up, look at it and, uh, find out more really messed up. I've been through Waco, uh, during my travels in Texas and, uh, yeah, it was like, Oh yeah, that's when that happened. Anyway, Funny reference by Nick. If you feel like getting into another Netflix documentary, check out the one about Waco. I think it's actually just called Waco. Uh, this one from number 36 says, TG family and I out in the Soyuz. Early start means early bedtime with a salute, number 36. Well, good to have you for a little bit. Appreciate that. I love how people are checking in from all over. That is the beauty of our new station. And... Uh, I've seen Taylor from Indiana's in there. We had uh, Redbeard, who's in Maui right now. Uh, there's been a few other ones 
Uh, Real Deal Prime says, don't drink the punch. Touche. Well, that was a different one, right? That was a different one. Uh, Dubis is a fellow Brock U alum. That's from Taylor. Uh, how did we get on to Waco Penner's Pancakes? Well, uh, Nick Alberga brought it up when he compared fans of Kyle Dubis to Branch Davidians. That's where it came from. Uh, VR Montenegro says, yeah, fear. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, what else do we have? James says, there's also a scripted series. Yeah, I think that's with Canadian Taylor Kitsch, if I remember correctly. Right, James? Let me know. 780-218-9999. Clomp Sauce says, women and children were murdered by the ATF with Bradley tanks. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. And they had a huge compound. There's tanks shelling it. Uh, they were firing back. It was bad. It was bad. Anyway, uh, let's let's get on to a much more pleasant topic, and that is the Oilers and the Leafs. We do have uh, Matty Cassian coming up with Game Changers shortly. We are live on location at Hudson's White Avenue. Come down for the watch party. Uh, some people already trickling in. Lots of tables reserved. Should be a great night here on White. And uh, I've got some GCs to give away. They made a fresh batch of them. So uh, we'll make sure that uh, you come by, say hi. We'll take care of a beer or two for you. Dusty and the gang are going to be here. The commish, Quinn Phillips, will be joining us. I know Eric and Awanek started the, the day at Hudson's Bourbon Street watching Canada. Did we make Copa America? I haven't checked up on that. Uh, hit me up with an update. Unless, Trev, do you know if Canada clinched Copa America yet? Uh, just looking in the nasty chat. Joel says, Maddie will be happy Canada advancing to the Copa America. Yes. So let's go. Boom. That is actually huge, and I'm happy about that because it's good to see our men's national side on the pitch doing well. Our women's team has been kicking butt for a long time, and uh, finally, you know, nice to see the men's side kind of catching up to what the women have been doing. Women still, obviously, with the gold medal at the Olympics and all that, uh, way better than the men and their results. Although, progress is being made. So Copa America clinched. For Canada, that is absolutely fantastic. I would imagine that Awanik and Eric will be into one, as they say. Let's get Matty Cassian on here. Our game analyst. Ah, there he is. He's rocking his flat brim EST cap. A little bit crooked. I love it. Is that deliberate? Are you doing that on purpose? Should I? I, I what's the correct I answer here? You're just feeling the weekend, my friend. I guess so. I guess you yeah. know what it's it's F1 yeah. weekend. I just I'm looking forward to trying to extend my lead in the uh the EST uh F1 um fantasy uh, fantasy pool, which is which is a okay. good thing. And uh you know, I'm ready to see Zach Hyman uh, take a slap shot into an empty net. So, yeah, I mean uh I'm I'm good. It's uh, it's it's well, looking like it's going to be a good weekend. It's definitely a good sports weekend, Tom. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Real good. Yeah, March weekend. Madness full swing. We got baseball, you know, spring training is Winding down, I mean, the season has already started in Korea. We've got the Shohei Otani controversy happening and the betting and his interpreter. And then, of course, we've got the playoff stretch drive happening. Uh, WHL playoffs are about to get going as the season wraps up. And then Cass talking about slap shots into empty nets because he wants to get going on Game Changers. Mm. Brought to you, as always, by Damon Bunting, Remax Elite. Damon Bunting, consistent top producing realtor in Greater Edmonton and among Western Canadian Remax realtors. He and his team would love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current home. Community driven. Damon understands what it takes to make a difference in our city. Check him out, DamonBunting.com, or visit his Instagram at Damon Bunting Real Estate. Uh, all right, Cass, you said it. Empty net. Slappers. Oh, yeah. I mean, just we talked about the storyline a lot. Everyone's talking about the storyline, and it's a fantastic storyline. Um, you know, Zach Hyman coming into town, into Toronto, um, a place where he was, in our opinion, very unceremoniously ceremoniously, uh, just let go, um, mm -hmm. you know, brought into Edmonton, and he just continued to have a tremendous amount of success uh, and just having such a fantastic season. Uh, now, now, um, what, what's interesting even to me, Tommy, is uh, Knobloch tweaks the lines a little bit. Yeah. And he puts Hyman with McDavid and Dreisaitl, which to yep. me just had me giggling because I'm like, he's trying to get Hyman to 50 in Toronto. Like that's, you, you can't tell me, you can't tell me that Knobloch didn't look at this and didn't say, I'm going to get him to 50 in Toronto. 
this is totally. going to be awesome. Like, let's reward him and, and get him with McDavid and Drysdale because those guys want to get him to 50 in Toronto as well. Oh, and we lost Cass uh, in the middle of point number one on Game Changers. He's all fired up. We'll get him back, and uh, we'll continue on with that one. I love how fired up Cass was about that. Uh, we'll get more from him shortly as uh, he has to fix his internet issues, and uh, he'll be good to go. Travis, he, he's working his way back, eh? Working his way back, but uh, yeah, his energy was, uh, I was feeling it. I was just smiling over here like, oh, he's bringing it right now. And yeah. then just cut off yeah. so quick. Darn it. Darn it. Oh, there he is. Let's get him back on here. Cass, you were you were on fire and then it just cut out. Like continue, please. Uh, the floor <laughs> where is where it cut off. Um at, at the end of it, uh, Tommy, I guess I'm just I'm just excited that even Knoblock is taking like this to heart in that he wants yep. to get a guy to 50 in Toronto in his hometown. Um the team that that let him go. Um, you know, you're playing with McDavid who also likes playing in Toronto, his hometown, you know, they're Ontario guy. And we'll talk about that soon, but Tommy, it's, it's not just a media created story. You know how no. so, sometimes we just, you know, we, people kind of make things up and, and you get yep. storylines and, and you're trying to find stuff to talk about. This is a very real one. And, and just the fact that Hyman is playing with McDavid and dry settle tonight tells me that the team is looking at this going like, Hey, this could be a pretty cool night, not just to win a hockey game, but to get a guy to that 50 goal milestone, um, it's just pretty awesome. So, it, will those two in McDavid and Dreisaitl be looking to feed Zach Hyman all night long? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and it's awesome. Yeah, seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Text us or via the nasty chat if you're watching live on location, Hudson's White Avenue. It's our EST watch party. Come on down. Say hello. I've got GCs. The staff here is fantastic. It's a lovely Saturday afternoon as we roll along on Game Changers, brought to you by Damon Bunting, Remax Elite with Maddie Cassian. Number two, Cass, hold the blue. It hold the blue line. Going to be pretty important against a, uh, a Toronto team that, that has some players that have uh, quite a bit of offensive punch. Now, uh, we could see a little bit of a depleted lineup potentially um, from the Toronto Maple Leafs. You know, Mitch Marner is is hurt with an ankle sprain, so he's he's out of the lineup. And, and um, you know, a couple other bodies, you have some, some sickness that's going through as well. So maybe a little bit depleted from the Toronto Maple Leafs. But uh, overall... It was still a really dangerous team, very dangerous team. They, yes, they can put the puck in the net, and you know they, they kind of have gone into a pattern here. The Toronto Maple Leafs of having like really high scoring games where it's just just straight shootouts. Now I think Toronto is going to look at this game against Edmonton and go, you know, they're trying to get Hyman to fifty, like David and Drysaddle, and they're playing together. So let's sit back and let's play defensively responsible. And Edmonton's probably looking at Toronto and, and saying the same thing. Um, right now for Edmonton's defenseman, I think holding that blue line is going to be really important. And, and, and for them to be able to do that, to cut down on the rush chances against, they're going to have to do a couple of things. Now, first and foremost is the forwards have to help with support back. You have yep. to help support back your defenseman in order for them to have the ability to play a tighter gap. So you can stand players up at the blue line or take away time and space at the blue line, uh, not allow Toronto just free passes to gain zone entry with full possession. Um, you know, you want them to have to chip it. You want them to have to pass it across the blue line as opposed to just being able to freewheel and skate it in. Um, so forwards need to come back. Defensemen need to have that good gap. And against the Toronto Maple Leafs, especially, the defensemen also need to be playing inside the dots. So, right. so even as you're trying to hold the blue line, maintaining that middle ice position, forcing Toronto to the outside is going to go a long way because players like Matthews, and he can score from anywhere. He really can score from anywhere. But where yes. he really excels is the second there's any kind of lateral movement. I mean, he'll beat a goalie straight up. He's one of the few guys that can do that. But if a goalie has to move in order to adjust to him, that's when he absolutely just, just clobbers them. So ensuring that you're defending from the middle out on those rushes against holding that blue line, pushing the puck to the outside with that forward support back is going to go a really long way to the Edmonton Oilers winning this hockey game tonight. Cass, uh, speaking of the blue line, we, we see Deharnay making his way back in and uh, you know, obviously nobody's surprised there, but some people were a little bit caught off guard that Stetcher is coming out and CC stay again. And listen, the Stetcher has only been in for a couple of games. They liked what he did against Buffalo Obviously, a very strong third period there. 
uh as your daughter your daughter's trying to get your attention cast okay there you got it um the fact that it's stetcher coming out and not cc as some people find it much to their chagrin what do you say to them yeah yeah um they, they caught up in the emotion because they they wanted cc traded at the deadline um right it, it just just yeah you're you're not you're not going to pull cc from the lineup nor should you right nor should you um it it like like, like stetcher's your extra guy and he's the extra guy for a reason mm -hmm. cc typically plays top 4 was he perfect last game no you know, he probably struggled or not shouldn't say probably he struggled a little bit at, at times that that sure. Buffalo game. Sure. But you're not pulling him out of the lineup, nor should you. He's you know, if the playoffs started today, Tom, who would you sit Stetcher or CC? I I would honestly probably sit Stetcher. I think Stetcher is there to give you a different type of look. If this was game seven of the Stanley Cup final and you had to choose between Stetcher and CC, who are you putting in the lineup? CC, probably. So, so unless he's been so bad, but he he's hasn't. So he, he's had bad. a better year. No, he hasn't. He he's he's right. quietly consistent, and and there's people that are just freak out about it, and and some of that's playing with Darnell Nurse. Well, Darnell does something, and CC's trying to cover for him, and all of a sudden you you have, you, you know, you, you have a play that breaks down, and it looks like it's CC's fault. When it's like, well, yeah, there's there's other stuff going on around him mm -hmm. on the ice um, that that doesn't necessarily instantly reflect unless you're really peeling back the plays and, and looking at what happened and breaking them down um but i mean i get people you know they, they get all antsy about that and all up about something so mm -hmm. whatever but yeah not not surprised there and goes back in he was a little banged up he'll he'll be fine i've played with broken fingers before you can do it it just depends on which finger which hand um right but generally speaking you, you tape it to another finger and you're fine so um, unless you're getting in fights and stuff, but I don't anticipate that from him. <laughs> unless you never know if Ryan Reeves is out there running around and something could happen. Oh, uh, right. Well, no Reeves tonight. He's banged up. Oh, there's tube socks. Hello. Oh, he's ignoring me. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, tube socks. No, he's ignoring me on purpose. Oh, there we go. Yes. He's mad at me about the font. Uh, all right. Uh, Zedmo Texan says, Vinny, comes out stature in in his opinion um interesting i mean teach their own teach their own for sure all right it is game changers with our game analyst matt cassian uh, number one was empty net slap shots number two hold the blue number three hometown energy Cast. yeah it's crazy how many guys from ontario the edmonton oilers have uh it, it, crazy really a, a lot of people from ontario a lot of players from that toronto region or that have played there before and um a lot of money on the board i mean th this is this is one of those games where the uh the friends and family tickets um probably get allocated and where it's like okay hey we can each give each guy only x amount because there's going to be so yes. many guys putting in requests for tickets for family and friends it's one of those games i'm a little bit of extra motivation that we saw a couple weeks ago leon had some people in town and he was jumping and and ready to go and it kind of is, is similar to that it's it's a road game for the edmonton oilers but it's a home game in the sense that a lot of these guys this is their hometown they, they yeah they've got a lot on the line here because they want to impress whoever's at the game you know why do they play well for them they want to get a win they want to have an impact and they taught me i do truly believe that that factors into how guys play and it's not just one it's not just two you have a lot of guys that are from that area so it's just i think an yeah. interesting wrinkle to the game just the, the number not just the number of canadians that the edmonton oilers have but the number of ontarians that they have if that i'm even saying that right i don't even know if that's right ontario i think that's the right ontarians, thing yeah i think whatever people yeah. from the toronto and toronto region um or that would have grown up play watching the leafs and, and cheering for the leafs in a lot of ways you know they are in that building playing for the edmonton oilers tonight and tommy you got to get up for those games. That's money on the board. A big night for a lot of the guys to try to contribute to the team fund. They're going to be working for it tonight. A lot of money on the board for the Oilers tonight. I'm just going to go down the list. Cass Bouchard. Uh, you've got Hyman, Henrique, Nurse, Brown, uh, Fogel. I think Carrick is a Toronto-ish or an Ontario guy. Then you've got uh, Stetcher, I believe, is from Michigan, if I recall correctly. McLeod, certainly. Perry. Of course, and then McDavid. Uh, so yeah, you got a CC's lot another of another Ontario guy. CC's yep. Ottawa, right? He's Ottawa, so I'm assuming 
tomorrow and today, probably a big deal for him as well. So, and, and he played for the Leafs, mm -hmm. former San as well, former teammate of yours. So I think this is going to be a big one. How much money do you think would be on the board in the room tonight? Ooh, um, I mean, inflation. It's probably gone up since I played. Inflation. Um, I mean, you're probably looking at the lower end guys. that got to leave probably 500 bucks each on the board. So, I mean, you're probably going to have bigger name guys like McDavid will have more on there. Um, guys that have been around a long time will have more on there. I mean, it could be a 10 grand on the board night. Like ten, ten, it could be a total Ooh. of 10 grand. I would, that, that would be probably my over under would be, would be 10 grand on the board. You, 10 G's on the yeah. board. Rough estimate from Cass. Oh yeah. Oh no, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't That's surprise me too if guys threw some money. So sometimes guys will do like, you'll have the party thing. But basically, yep. it's like you'll you'll buy dinner for the guy that scores the game winner, sort of thing. So it'll be like hundred bucks uh, okay. for the game winner, like G Dub yep. gets a hundred, sort of thing, like like whoa, 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 you stuff like that, uh, extras. And so th those extras that are like directly to a player, yeah, they for sure are up there. Absolutely, those uh, are too. A little peek behind the curtain mm -hmm. into the locker room. I love it, Cass. Good stuff on game changers tonight. Uh, take care of the girls. Are you doing daddy daycare tonight? I saw one of your daughters pop in there. Is everything good? Yeah, we're everything all good. Okay? <laughs> we're all okay. good. A, it's it's frequently daddy daycare around here. Yeah, there's there's, I know. there's something I was I was placating them, and the uh, the youngest one was half napping, half watching a show, and the show ended, and she didn't know how to use the remote, and the older two oh. were coloring and refusing to help her, so I had to yell at them to to help her. So. <laughs> Well done, my friend. Well done, as always. Handling uh, double duty and uh, doing it with grace. I'll catch up with you on the post game. Sounds show. good, buddy. I look forward to it. That's our game analyst, Matt Cassian, with Game Changers, brought to you by Damon Bunting, Remax Elite. Keep those texts coming in, 780 218 9999, and then via the nasty chat as well. We're getting you set for the Oilers and the Maple Leafs live on location, Hudson's White Avenue. Now the nasties are starting to roll in. I saw Corey B, DVD and Tina are here. Uh, Tube Socks showed up and he got mad at me for using the wrong font. I see VR Montenegro and his lovely wife Ginger about to walk in. So uh, it's about to get good here at Hudson's White Ave. We got a big table. Hello, Ginger. Welcome back. Good to see you. And there's Mike back there, of course. All right. I love it. He's got his EST hat on. This is absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a ton of fun. Oilers and Maple Leafs. Uh, let's take you around the National Hockey League right now. 11 games on the schedule. Let's get you up to speed on what's been going on thus far. The Islanders beat the Jets 6-3. to three. Uh, Philly gets the better of the Bruins 3-2 in Philadelphia. St. Louis 5-4 winners in overtime over Minnesota. No goals scored yet in Nashville. Red Wings and Preds midway through the second period. You've got the Devils welcoming in the Ottawa Senators, of course, Edmonton in Toronto. The Rangers at MSG hosting the Florida Panthers. Uh, later tonight, you got the Canucks hosting the Flames. The Kings get the Lightning at Crypto.com Arena, San Jose and Chicago in the Battle of the Basement Dwellers, and then the Vegas Golden Knights that should have a layup tonight against the Columbus Blue Jackets, but we'll see how they handle the Jackets. The Golden Knights, uh, a 4-6 and six record. In their last 10, they did win their last game. They're 22 11 and 2 on home ice. So you would think, in theory, that they should handle the Blue Jackets with ease, but you never know with the way the ja uh, not the Jackets have been playing, but certainly the Golden Knights have been playing of late. All right. Uh, I want to get to a couple of texts here, see what everybody's up to. Bad Billy coming in says, Hey, Tommy, is Stetcher in again or the big guy back asking for my dog? Go oil, oil 5 3. Hyman hits 50 on an empty netter with a laughing emoji. Uh, all right. Uh, Bad Billy Stetcher is out. Vinny DeHarnay is in. And uh, DeHarnay back with Nurse, Ekholm with Bouchard, Kulak, and CC. And we'll see if Hyman gets those two goals to hit 50. DVD, who's sitting right beside me, was the one who asked Hyman. If he was thinking about tonight uh, after that game the other night and a guy who's really smooth talking and usually pretty comfortable was actually a little bit caught up. You made the guy, you made him like catch himself. Way to go. It was your fault. Not your fault. Get out of here. DVD. May, hey, you're going to hop on a little bit in, in a few minutes. Okay, great. We'll get Derek Van Dees from NHL.com to hop on in a little bit. Uh, let's see what we got here. Maple Jed says it was those Laurentian, elites couldn't take the anti-toronto talk i kid i kid 
where does the cash go again? Maple Jed, uh, they put it on the board. There's, they do like big dinners. Uh, they also do like a party fund, maybe at the end of the year. And then uh, some guys uh, get, get uh, I don't know if the money goes specifically to a guy, but it usually goes to the team party according to cast. So money on the board tonight. Uh, this one from Roger. Raj says, uh, hey, Tommy, can you elaborate money on the board, dinner, drinks, or does it go into a big pot for a big banger night? Uh, basically, all of the above. All of the above, and it depends on the scenario. And and Cass even says the guy that gets the game winner might get uh, dinner taking a big dinner taken care of for him or something along those lines. So uh, money on the board basically says, hey, let's go a little added fuel to get, uh, to get the win, and especially if it's an occasion like half the team playing in its hometown of Toronto like tonight so there you go uh 780-218-9999 if you want to text us and then nasty chat what's going on here emerville says hello oilers nation great background of the white avenue guys cheers thank you i'm glad we got the lighting that works out nice it's better at night too when it's darker but it actually looks not bad you got the strat the classic strat back there historic uh, they fixed it up had a fire what two summers ago and uh they made sure that it's all good and there's a nice bar underneath there as well but uh our bar of choice tonight definitely hudson's white ave where we are right now uh what else is going on here uh all right uh out of b cast from kevin i too have three daughters and it's busy yes daddy daycare doing good and then jenna says oh font police are the worst am i right well tube socks is giving it to me because he did not like my choice of font. All right, let's go inside the Oilers locker room really quickly. When we come back, Derek Van Deest will be joining me from NHL.com here at Hudson's White Ave. Trev, where are we going to first? Uh, we've been talking about him all night. I think it's only fitting if we hear from Zach Hyman. So here he is. What tonight in this building? Two goals and get that milestone, Zach. Yeah, I mean, it'd be uh, pretty special. Um, I don't think uh, many people thought that. Uh, I'd be have the I guess have the opportunity to, to do it here obviously, um, but uh, yeah, if, it'd be be pretty special obviously. When did you start thinking that you could do it? Uh, here? Uh, I mean, I was four goals away going into Buffalo, so probably not realistic. And then scored two and against Buffalo, so then it was okay. I've scored two before, um, but everybody's making a big deal out of it. I I said it before. Like, I don't think I've won here yet, so that's. The focus, and uh, you can never really choose when you score. Like you, you go to the areas and you, you make plays, and you know if you just you try to do your part. Sheldon said your nickname with, with the Marlies was uh, was Shaq. Kind of. <laughs> I don't know why you never heard of that one. No, you guys never did. I was a <laughs> AJ McLean. Um, yeah, that was uh, my first year pro. So actually, a bunch of guys here like uh, Connor Brown, Sammy Carrick, we were on that team. So yeah. How many friends and family will you have in the building tonight? Uh, it'll be lots. It'll be lots. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the number, but it's lots. So we're asking you about this whole, you know, potential milestone tonight. Are they, like, what's the sense of excitement you're getting from your friends and family? Oh, you guys like talking about it, but everybody else is just staying quiet about it uh, until you kind of hit it. Like, hockey's a weird game. Like, there's no guarantee that you even get there, so you just got to go out there every game and and uh, and play it. And, yeah, I, I, just going out there and play. Zach, there's some best on best hockey coming the next couple of years, starting with the Four Nations next year. But what would it mean for you to be in that mix uh, along with Connor and play for Canada in the best on best? Yeah, I think that's every player's dream is to play for your country. And it's been a while since the, those tournaments have happened, the Olympics and uh, the World Cup. And obviously there's a Four Nations tournament. So uh, to be talked about in on those teams is, is pretty cool and to you know if i do end up getting there it's so a while away that would be pretty special what, what would the zach hyman standing here today tell the zach hyman first year pro who's called you know shock hyman about his about his journey uh, oh man um yeah i mean the same thing that 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 pro would tell the kid in junior like i think every step of the way uh you know i think it's kind of the message for all kids, you know, I haven't had the easiest journey in the sense that I was never kind of the best player on my team and and uh, and nobody thought I would continue to progress. So 
just continue to hit little milestones and continue to work really hard and and just believe in yourself. I think that's the key. There's so much noise, and as you get to higher levels, there's more noise, and there's always people who are questioning your abilities, depending on no matter what level you're at, and you just have to have an inner drive and an inner belief and a, an inner work ethic um, that if you do things right every day, good things are going to happen, and uh, even if they don't, if you can look at yourself and say, hey, I tried my best, right? And I think that's uh, a message that I've always kind of given to myself. My parents told me that from a young age, just go work hard and whatever happens, happens, and even now, it's the same message. How strong is your bond with those Leafs that you broke in with? You guys are really good friends off the ice, went to each other's weddings, that kind mm. of thing. Yeah, I played a lot, a long, a lot, of, a lot of time. Spent a lot of time with those guys. Played a lot of years here, um, and like you said, we we kind of grew up together. We, we were, a bunch of us were on the Marlies together. A bunch of us started first year pros, or first year NHL players with the Leafs. So. Um, Definitely stay in touch with those guys. Like you mentioned, we were at Mitchie's wedding this summer and and uh, stay in touch. And they're great friends. And uh, it's always fun to play against them. They're, they're great players and over there, too. So it'll be a fun fun matchup. I know you've covered this ground before, Zach, but now you know putting together another outstanding season, more time has passed. Just looking back at how difficult that summer was when you did leave here and, and sign in Edmonton and all the emotions leaving your hometown. Mm. As it turns out, three years later, how do you, how do you feel about all that? <laughs> yeah, um, obviously it worked out as best as it possibly could have worked out. So looking back, it it worked out great. Uh, I said it a bunch, like when I was going through the process, uh, it was, I didn't look at any other teams besides Toronto until I knew that that door was closed and didn't really have much of a choice with regards to that door. So as soon as that door closed, I, I just quickly looked at Edmonton and said, you know, out of all the teams, this is the place that I want to be. For so many reasons, um, my wife and I, we got permission and we went out there and visited and right away we knew that that was the spot because um, that was the key thing, you know, do we think we could grow a family there, that's the most important because hockey wise, it was a dream fit, I, I knew from the start, like, that's that's where I would fit in best and that's where, you know, I thought we would have the best chance to win and that's ultimately what you want to do is you want to win a Stanley Cup and, and have the opportunity to play with Connor and Leon and Nuge, like that was... A dream scenario for me, and, and obviously it's worked out as as best as it possibly could have. What was it like to have to pivot so quickly, like th putting all your eggs in one basket, and then you know door closes and you have to move on? Uh, it's life. Like that's that's. I think everybody goes through situations in their life where um, big changes happen, and you have to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations, and um, that's why we kind of made the decision that you know while we were discussing with Toronto like that will be our focus and as soon as we knew that that door was closed we weren't reopening it and uh, and as soon as that door closed it was all Edmonton and uh, and we were hopeful that that would work and and obviously we got everything done Kenny was great and and uh, now we're here what similarities do you see between uh, Connor and Austin uh, oh they're so different <laughs> I mean similar they're both elite top of the world players um, but they play so differently and their style plays different so um, but yeah they, they both have an inner drive to, to be the best I think is, is probably what I'd say. Connor said that Austin doesn't get enough credit for how smart he is like what stood out about his uh, hockey IQ when you played with him? Yeah I mean, when I played with him I don't think he got enough credit for his two-way game like I think he's extremely strong um, in his D zone and a lot of that has to do with being positionally in the right spot and that's to do with hockey IQ and I think with regards to goal scoring like everybody talks about how good of a shot he has and, and that's where he scores but from my memory when I played with him he was scored so many goals in front of the net and tipping pucks and just knowing where to be with regards to the bouncing off a goalie coming down on the rebounds and things like that so I think hockey IQ wise just understanding how to get a shot off and, and how to score just a, probably the best in the world. There is Zach Hyman, 48 goals on the season in search of 50. Could he get it tonight in his hometown versus his former team? I like his chances. Derek Van Dees from NHL.com joining us now. DVD, uh, you got Zach Hyman verklempt. I did. Yeah, the other night. Oh, I You did, had yeah, the first did, question. Yeah. Here, put that I bad did. boy really oh, close. There we go. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I, yeah. Explain. 
Well, I just, I got the first question in the scrum and I asked him about going back to Toronto and I don't think he, I think I caught him off guard. I think he was expecting the question, but sure. I don't think he was expecting it right off the bat. And for myself, you know, I asked him a question about the game and then I'm like, well, I need an answer about this question. So yeah, yeah. I threw in that question and, and the way he was really pensive about it, yes, I, it was like, he kind of paused and he's like, well, what do I want to say? Uh, and he just, I, I just think, you know, he's the type of guy, he didn't want to upset anyone. No. He didn't want to give Toronto any bulletin board material. Right. He, you know, he just said, I, well, I want to win the game. It would be great to score the two goals there. But you know, deep inside, he wants it. Bad. He wants it bad. He wants it bad. He, he wants to kind of, it, it would be better if uh, Kyle Lewis was still in Toronto. I think he wants to stick it to, he would like to stick it to the guy who thought he wasn't good enough to play on our top six. And I think right. that's kind of what they told him in Toronto. Well, we have really good top six players. We don't think you're good enough to play on our top six. And he went, really? Okay, then I'm going to go play with the best player in the world, and I'm going to score 50 goals uh, at a $5.5 million contract. And then I'm, and then, and the fact that it's worked out that he can get the 50 in Toronto where they kind of rejected him. Like he said, I only wanted to re-sign in Toronto. I wasn't right. even looking anywhere else. Like you're talking about a hometown kid. You would have given them a hometown discount. Everyone loves him. Everyone's ever come across paths with Zach Hyman knows what a great person he is. Yes. He's a quality character. There's the guys that you want, guys like that on your team. Um, and the fact that the, he was essentially rejected by his hometown team, his hometown GM. Uh, and he says, okay, well, I'm going to go find somewhere else to play. And it's worked out incredibly well with him and the Edmonton Oilers playing on Connor McDavid's wing. Uh, and I, I, I really want him to get the 50 in tonight. Toronto tonight. And I think Connor McDavid wants him to get the fit. I think the entire team is going to, you watch tonight, they're going to be looking for him every chance they get. McDavid, Drysidle, uh, anytime a guy gets a chance, they're going to see where's Hyman? Where's Hyman? Every time he's on the ice, he's going to get about seven or eight shots tonight. And I'm telling you, I, I, I'd be surprised if he didn't get 50 tonight. Derek Van Dees from NHL.com with us now. Uh, he's on a line with McDavid and Drysidle. Well, what do you make of Chris Knobloch doing that well, for him. Well, Chris Knobloch has a sense of occasion as well. well and yeah. even, yeah, he were talking to Chris Knobloch. He's like, yeah, we'll find him some shifts. That's yeah, Chris Knobloch trying to be, you know, he's, Chris is, Chris Knobloch's a great guy, but he's, yeah. you know, in, and that's him trying to be funny. He's, yeah, yeah, we'll get him some shifts. They're going to get him out there as, as much as possible. And to tell you what, the best case scenario would be to get it out of the way early yep. and then focus on the game. Because that's, I think that's what they wanted. And I, I, I'm going to see this guy. You're going to get a lot of shifts early in the first period, second period. See if they can get those two goals, get it out of the way, get the celebration, whatever's going to happen to Toronto. And I think Toronto fans will be happy for him. Sure. Because I think they were, this is one guy, There's there was a sentiment that people said, fine, good riddance, you know, he's never going to be a great player. And now the people are like, you know what? We made a mistake. We made a mistake in Toronto. Yes. This guy should have been here. He should have been part of our core, should have been part of our leadership group. We let a good one get away. And I think that's how they feel. And, you know, I think the owners are like, well, thanks. Thanks. We really appreciate you not re-signing him because yeah. he's, he's fit in so well here. He's part of the leadership group. We all love him in the media because he, he'll give you as much time as you need, as much time as you want. Yes. He's never a guy that, you know, runs away from you, good or bad. And he will sit there and answer every question you have because he did take the long route to get here. He's just happy to be in the league. And he's happy to have the success that he's having. And when a good guy like that has success, I think everybody cheers for him. They do. Uh, that's a great point. Uh, you know, as we're doing our pregame show, they've got a million TVs, some huge TV screens here at Hudson's on White. And uh, I'm popping up and I'm looking at the headline and it's McDavid versus Matthews. I looked at you as we we're listening to Hyman speak and I shook my head. And I said, look at that. And you even shook your head. It's like, this is Zach Hyman night. And then the other thing too, like, all due respect to Austin Matthews, best scorer in the league right now. He's not on the same level no. as McDavid, and you can make a case for is he? He's probably somewhere around around where Leon Drysaddle is. Drysaddle has a point more than him in the same amount of games this season. Yeah, no, I think it's yeah. They, you know, they've always been trying to elevate. They try. They, they try to elevate. Uh, you know, it's it's Toronto. They they're trying to elevate Matthews to a level that. Yes, he's an elite goal scorer. And they're talking about, oh, he's going to get 70s here. He's not getting 70. Like, he's, he's not going to do it. Like, he, he might get 60, but, you know, it's it's just a, it's a sense that they, they're so desperate for a star, superstar he's player, a superstar. superstar team. Yes, but he's not the best player in the league. No. And we know that by far. It's not even close. 
you know, and there's maybe two or three guys. You got a good Kucherov in there as well. Like, yep. the, he's in that. There's, McCarr, there's, there's, McKinnon. Yeah, they're just, he's not the best player in the league. And I yeah. think they, they try to push that narrative. Um, he's not. He's a fantastic goal scorer. He's a great goal scorer. Uh, but that's pretty much all he is right now. And I think it is it is Zach Hyman night in Toronto. And I yep. think there's going to be a lot of people really rooting for Zach Hyman. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this. It's a big game. You know, both teams obviously want to win this game. It's always a, it's not, it's not a rivalry because Matthew said that the other day. We don't really play him enough to be called a rivalry. No. But, but there's there because there's so many guys on the Oilers from that Ontario area yes. that go back home and want to yes. play well at home. And obviously McDavid being the number one guy, he always likes to play well at home. It was like when Gretzky would go back to Toronto, he always wanted to have a big game in Toronto. So I think that's that's the big thing. But yeah, I think the 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 number one storyline is here. Can Zach Hyman get fifty goals in Toronto three years after they essentially rejected him? Yeah. Uh I say yes. I think a lot of our listeners and our viewers have said yes. That was the question of the night. They're looking forward to seeing if Hyman can get the job done. What do you think of the change at defense? Tonight for the Oilers, uh, Troy Stetcher comes out. Vinny DeHarnay, good to go. He goes in. There were some people saying, "Why, why not take Cece out?" But Cass kind of gave his two cents on it. What's your take on the Oilers' blue line? Well, I think the Oilers' blue line is with Stetcher was always going to be the number seven guy. He's always going to come in here and be be the number seven guy. Um, and so I think that's the situation. There's <laughs> Hernan Salas, Hernan Salas. Salas. the Latino yeah. Heat. That's us. Yeah, yeah. take it. Um, you know, it's always going to be the situation. He's going to be the number seven guy. He had a good game. But I think that he feels so comfortable that the fact that he's the number seven, as yes. opposed to maybe some guy in the minors that they have to bring up, maybe you know Broberg, and then Broberg's going to come up when the playoffs start. So then, then they're going to have that that defensive depth mm -hmm. that you need in the playoffs because you're going to go down, you're going to lose one, two, maybe three defensemen. You need that defensive depth. But I think the Oilers, they right now they have that uh, consistency and continuity on the blue line. Faith. Yeah, and they do, and they don't want to. They don't want to just start messing with it here. Ten games, twelve games, where the season's over. Right. You know they want to keep it because they want those guys playing well going into the season. And and if anything, I think Troy Stretcher gives them a lot of confidence that they can plug him in anywhere. If someone goes down, he can come in and get the job done. It's a fantastic problem to have, and and you know what, the problem is the wrong word. It's uh, I don't know what would you describe it as. It's an ideal scenario. Yeah, it's a good scenario. It's, it's a good scenario. scenario. It's an yeah. ideal situation to yeah. have when you brought in this guy. You brought him in as a depth defenseman, and he's obviously a depth defenseman. And, you know, maybe maybe down the road, yeah, CC might need a night off or something like that. But I think they have to get that top six really kind of, or that, that bottom six uh, defensive six the, the, really going. Yeah, rotation. Yeah. And rotation, all that, yeah. get him going, yeah. Okay, uh, really quickly, I know you were watching Canada trying to compete to get into the Copa America. You're from Chile. Uh, you know all about Copa America. Mm -hmm. Hernan knows about it. His cousin, Lu or his nephew, Luciano, knows all about it. Uh, Canada call. There's Lieutenant Eric and Matthew Wanick and Dustin Nielsen. All oh, the boys oh, are all rolling in. Uh, Eric gave it one of these. Like He's pumped up, ready to go. Canada qualifies for Copa America. Yeah. Uh, how big of a deal is this? And I know we have a lot of people that aren't necessarily huge soccer fans, no. but... This is, we're talking about a World Cup a year ago. This, yeah. And this now we're is, talking about Copa America. Yeah, this is huge because Canada is obviously hosting the 2026 World Cup. Yeah. And so to be able to play in a tournament with, against Argentina, you're going to play, Canada's going to get to play Messi if Messi's in that tournament. You're going to get to play Chile. Chile's going to be a great team. You're going to yes. get to play Peru. You're going to play, play three top teams in South America. And this is a bang that I've been drumming for 20 years that Canada's got to find their way. It to play those opponents. they got to find their way to play South American teams. The Americans have been playing in the Copa America for years and years and years. There's there's 10 teams in South America, but it's a 12-team tournament. Right. So every year they get invited. They, they invite, and I, and I kept banging the drum. Canada's got to get an invite to this tournament. Get invited. They expanded it to 16 teams, so added some uh, North American teams and some CONCACAF teams yep. now because they, they, they're they just trying to get this tournament. It's, it's going to come down to the South American teams again. It's usually Brazil, Argentina in the final, right. which it will be, nah, okay. but it'll be a different path to get there. But to be able for Canada to be able to play these elite level teams like an Argentina, you know, I, I would say Chile is probably, you know, a little, a little below that, like, but okay. get to play a team like that. Get to play a team like Peru. This is huge for them. It's absolutely massive for them to be playing this tournament, especially building up to the next World Cup. And tell you what, Building up to the next World Cup, they're going to get a high, high-profile coach because a high-profile coach is going to come in here and want to take this team at the World Cup. The evolution of the Canadian men's side continues, which is a good thing to see. Trying yeah. to catch up, if I said 
to what our women have done on the national program. Is that fair? No, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. The women have been very successful on the national program. They, their, their program is competing for Olympic gold medals. Their program is competing for World Cup titles. You know, they're, they're not there, but they're banging on the door. They're yeah. competitive with the best teams in the world. The best team in the world on the women's side is the United States, and Canada is right there with the United States. The Canadian men are not there. They're, they're still a few steps away, but they're taking slowly getting up there. They're slowly taking those steps. And it's a long road. It's a long process. There's a lot of teams that you got to play and go through. But to me, Canada's got to stop playing, you know, these these island teams, these Caribbean teams. <laughs> yeah. You're not Curacao, in, Curacao and <laughs> St. Kitts and Bart's and even yeah. Trinidad and Tobago. Right. Got to start playing Argentina. Got to start playing Brazil. Got to start playing those top level teams and they will yeah now that they, they're qualified for the 2026 world cup that is a big deal and i'm glad we're talking about it uh, it is a sports station after all this is an oilers show over under six and a half tonight goals for the Oilers and Leafs. what would you say uh i would say the over i think i think there's gonna be some goals because as motivated as hyman is to get his 50th yeah i think matthews is pretty motivated to get his 60th uh, can you could. imagine if that happened on the same night hattie and hattie uh, hattie and hattie or hattie and two, whatever it happened if it's 50, that, that'd be a great story. If yeah. Guys, those two guys get their milestones. But yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of goals going on. It's going to be a lot of stuff happening. Um, so no, it should be a fun, fun night. Uh, 57 goals on the season for Matthews, 48 on the season for Hyman, and uh, 32 assists Matthews has now for 89 points. Dry settle at 90 points. McDavid well into the hundreds in search of 100 assists, which would be amazing. What do you make of that DVD? His march towards 100. That's why he's not shooting, That's obviously, That's why he's not right? shooting, yeah he, yeah. he saw that 100. He's like, what? How long has it been since someone got 100 assists? It's been, what, they're almost 30 years? Yeah, I think and how was, few, yeah, yeah, a few guys, do guys it. that have done it. So he's like, that was a challenge and a goal. I think last year was a challenge to get 60 goals. I think this year's a challenge to get 100 assists. Sure. Maybe next year the challenge will be to put them together, right? Yeah. <laughs> get 170 points. So, but that is a challenge. That's where he's kind of, and, and again, another thing, he, he was kind of joking about it when we asked him about Hey, are you concerned you're not scoring? He's you like, asked, him, asked him that. that you keep asking him in these lap. He's going to give you great responses. I asked him that question. And he's he, he kind of 20s like, under the table. I don't, I don't know. I, I need think, good answers. They need good answers. Give me good answers. Yeah. But it was a great answer. It's like, I'm done shooting. I'm just going to pass the puck now. And I thought was it was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. I thought it was a great line. And, and it just kind of goes to show you how Connor McDavid has come along. And, and he's kind of fun. Like, he's his personality yes. is kind of showing a little bit too. So. Yeah, lots of guys are having when they're winning, they're having fun. Tom. Sure, it's easy to should. get good answers out of players when they're winning. As when they're they losing should. is when they like you can't get anything out of them. Well, so. we dealt with enough of that in the yeah. last fifteen years. Exactly. Uh, DVD, great stuff as always. Derek Van Dees from NHL.com. Uh, he's part of the party here at Hudson's White Ave. It's picking up. You can probably hear it. Uh, it's going to be a, a really good Saturday night. Uh, so come on down if you're not doing anything for the game. It gets going in about 20 minutes' time. We're going to go inside the Oilers' locker room one more time. YouTube, Trev, let us know where we're going. Uh, yeah, while we were talking to Connor McDavid, let's uh, let's hear from him. Uh, this is Connor McDavid. I guess old team in this building. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, you know, t obviously to see him uh, achieve that accomplishment uh, at any point would be great, but obviously th this building means a lot to him. Um, obviously playing here and you know being from here, lots of family here. Um, it'd be great. Wait, what's that? I thought he was going to come out. <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. Here he is. <laughs> All right, that's it. Then. All right, yeah. yeah. What, what, what is popping the most like about him this year? What is popping? Um, just his, his battle level at the net. I mean, um, you know, just being around there, um, getting his stick on things, um, finding loose pucks, making little plays in tight. Um, he's a great a great goal scorer. You know, he goes about it differently than than uh, maybe an Austin Matthews or something like that. But you know, he's a great goal scorer in his own right. In his own right, but um, you know, it's been fun to watch. Connor, obviously, you know um, Connor Brown for quite some time. He's really had to persevere this year after mm -hmm. a tough year last year. What's allowed him to remain effective, even though the offense may not be where he would have liked it to have been? Uh, well, I think I think. Um, him staying as positive as he could, um, him um, really owning um, what's been asked of him. You know, obviously on the kill and um, the minutes he's been given, he's been solid. But especially on the kill, I find he's been 
probably our best penalty killer. Um, you know, just so good angling, uh, making it hard on guys, making it hard uh, to get into our zone, but um, doing a lot of really, really good things uh, away from the puck. Connor, morning up to Canada Management. Fix your brain for Four Nations next year. Uh, bring up Zach's name perhaps as a possibility or uh... <laughs> I mean I, I don't need to bring up his name his plays uh, his plays probably put him on the radar for sure um, you know and, and you know maybe he's playing his way onto the team who knows it's still a long ways away but um, like I said his play has been uh, everything that uh, you know that, that's all the talking it really needs to do I know you so dialed in on, on what this team has to get prepared for the playoffs and, and what's at hand but now that all this international stuff's official from time to time, have you thought about what it could look like line mates wise and you know, it's not that far away. Yeah. Um, of course, of course you think about it. Um, I have certainly, um, it's so exciting, so exciting for hockey, um, so exciting for kind of guys my age, you know, I think of uh, an Austin or you know, an Eichel or some of these guys that um, haven't really had the opportunity. It's exciting for, for guys our age. and. It's exciting for hockey as a whole, and um, yeah. What have you seen from Austin this season that's allowed him to somehow even go to another level when it comes to goal scoring? Yeah, um, it seems like he's just, uh, he finds so many different ways to score. He's so smart. Um, I don't think he gets enough credit for um, just how smart he is. He's always in the right area. Um, he's always uh, putting himself in a, in a spot to, to score, and um, it's been really impressive to watch. It's like a reality show for, for some of the stars at the golf and the F1. Is that something that you'd be interested in having behind the scenes with, with you and your life? Um, that's a good question. Um, first time we're getting asked that question. Um, um, yeah, I, I think I'm open to it. Obviously, if, if uh, you know we want to grow the game, you know it seems like that's been... Uh, you, know, you look what it's done for some of the other sports like F1, like golf. Um, it's done amazing things for those sports, and um, I think all of us hockey guys are are interested in growing our game, and and um, you know that's part of it. You know, kind of opening, you know, letting you know opening the doors to, to some of that stuff, all within reason, of course. But um, you know, I think you got to be open to it if you want to grow the game. Do you watch any of them? Like those? Of course, yeah. Of course. Do you have a favorite or like? Do I have a favorite? I really. Like, cool uh. I just I just finished up the the second second season of Full Swing and I thought that was great to see the Ryder Cup kind of stuff. I thought that was really interesting. Um, really enjoyed that. It must be a different perspective for you though because you're interested like anyone else about golf. On the other hand, you're like, oh, the cameras uh, the, you know, as an athlete. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, and 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 that's why I said within reason. Obviously, um, you know, our our uh, our privacy is still important, and um, you know that that's. Of course, playing in Edmonton and Toronto, the guys here um, start bringing cameras around, figuring out where guys are at all the time. Um, you know, it can be it can be dangerous, I guess. And not I shouldn't say dangerous, but you know, you could start getting bothered a lot more. But um, you know, with that being said, like I said, if 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 we want to grow the game, it's something that we got to look at, and um, everyone's going to have a different comfort level with that, um, and you got to just gauge where you're at with that. Oh, he's oh, he is. Oh, that's awesome. Um, what's he? He was a great, a great roommate. Um, took great care of me as a young kid, as a young, young guy coming into the league. Um, he's a great cook, underrated cook, I would say. Um, you know, uh, but it's great. Been great to see him. You know, kind of find his footing in the in the uh, media world, I guess, and for him to be making his debut, it's uh, it's exciting. There's Connor McDavid. Uh, a wide variety of topics. Uh, the Oilers superstar discussing there. The uh, reality show talking about Hyman, talking about uh, Four Nations face-off, and then of course focused on getting a win for his team as well as uh, the 50th goal of the season. For Zach Hyman, two away. Hyman will plan a line with McDavid and Drysaddle tonight. We'll see how that goes. If you're wondering about the lineup, I'll give it to you right now. For the Oilers, it will be, like I mentioned, McDavid between Drysaddle and Hyman. Nugent Hopkins centering McLeod and Fogel. Adam Henrique with Kane and Perry on his flanks. Uh, Sam Carrick with Matthias Janmark and Kana Brown on defense for the Oil. Ekholm paired up with Bouchard. Nurse. With DeArnay, who's back in action after missing the last couple of games. 
Kulak with CC. That means no Troy Stetcher and no Derek Ryan. As for the Toronto Maple Leafs, you've got Austin Matthews between Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi. John Tavares with Matthew Nyes and William Nylander. Pontus Holmberg with Bobby McMahon and Nick Robertson. David Kempf between Connor Dewar and Noah Gregor. On defense for Toronto, Morgan Riley paired up with Jake McCabe. Joel Edmondson with Timothy Lilligren. Simon Benoit or Simone Benoit, depending on the day and where you're at. Hello, Tube Sox. He's paired up with Connor Timmons. Uh, out for the Leafs. Ryan Reeves, day-to-day -day undisclosed. Ilya Labushkin, day-to-day -day illness. Kali Yarncroak, IR hand. Mitch Marner, day-to-day -day sprained ankle. Mark Giordano, IR concussion. John Klingberg, IR hip. And although Matt Murray did skate recently, he is on the IR with a hip issue, and uh, if there has been any changes, please let me know when it comes to the Leaves lineup, but I haven't seen anything. I'm taking a quick peek. And uh, Have you seen anything, Trev, in, in regards to the Leaves, or did I get the lineup pretty much bang That's on? That's what I was looking at, so I haven't seen anything, All Tony. Right. That's, that was the last lineup I saw for the Maple Leafs, and uh, so I wanted to pass that along in goal tonight. You got 25 year old Stuart Skinner going for Edmonton, 31, 13, and 4, 258 goals against average, 908 save percentage, two shutouts for Skinner in 49 games this season. Skinner versus Toronto, 2 and 1 record, 336 goals against average, 891 save percentage in the three appearances versus the Leafs. And then at the other end of the rink, 27 year old Ilya Samsonov, 18, 16, or 18, 6, and 7. With a 312 GAA, 888 save percentage, two shutouts in 33 games this season. Sam Sonov versus Edmonton, 0 1 1, 571 GAA, 842 save percentage in three appearances versus the Oil. All right, let's get YouTube Trev on there. I just saw Cole from Ellerslie, who stopped by. He's having himself a day. He had a game earlier today at CAC Arena. His team was eliminated from the CCRHL playoffs. And then uh, he said he did the double whammy. He went to Hudson's on Bourbon Street, West of Tamal, with Awanik and Lieutenant Eric. And then he made his way over here. So uh, Cole from Ellerslie, shout out to you. Cheers to you, my friend. And uh, he says, my wife wasn't too happy about it, but Cole needed a day. So he's having himself a day. And uh, man, it's starting to. It's starting to crank up here. They got the back room open, tables reserved, people showing up. The commissioner, Quinn Phillips, is here. Uh, it's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, we're going to have a great time here at Hudson's on White. Come on down, stop by. I've got some GCs left. I think I'm getting some more. I have to talk to Sarah from Hudson's. Uh, she might have a few more. Uh, the glue guy, Jay Milne, will be stopping by. Derek Van Dees from HL.com is here. Uh, Hernan Salas, the Latino Heat, is here. Zach to come. He's got a Pat Maroon jersey on today, and uh, it's going to be a great time. So come on down to Hudson's White Ave. All right, where's YouTube, Trev? You up? There you are. I'm, I'm right here. Final thoughts from you, my I'm friend. Right here, there Tommy. you are, big boy. I wish you were here too, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's too bad that it's uh, it's a little far away from the EST headquarters. I'd probably get there, yes. watch 10 minutes of the game. And I'd have to come on back, but I know. Hey, you know what? It's it's uh, not a problem. I'm able to get some video editing done. Um, so yeah, I it, it's all good and it, it's nice. I it, it's going to be nice and peaceful and quiet here. I can't wait to get to watch the game. Dusty was talking about. It. He's like, I actually love just coming in here. It's just so quiet and peaceful. Like I get a lot of work done. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I already cracked open a nice uh, six o'clock or logger. So I'm going to be watching the game and uh, yeah, it's uh, I'll finish with this. Zach Hyman, uh, his best year in the Toronto. Maple Leafs. He got 41 points tonight. That's that's goals and assists. His best year as a Maple right. Leaf. 41 points tonight. He's on the quest for 50 goals. Just 50. Like you know, that's crazy. So it's it, it's crazy to think that uh, you know that's not even including assists. He's already matched his best career high as he would have as a Leaf with just his goals. It's it's insane the year he's putting together. So all eyes will be on 18 tonight. Uh, 97. The the whole line. You got a lot of talent. I can't wait. These are the games you look forward to most hockey night in Canada. It's uh, it's almost playoffs. Uh, it's it's the best. It's yeah. it's literally the best. So uh, I I can't wait, Tommy, and uh, to talk about a post game. I'm expecting to talk about a very high eventful game, and uh, I can't wait for it. I really can't. Hey, Trev, there's a waitress that works here. That's she's from Pincher Creek. 
actually? She has the Pitcher Creek. No, she's actually from Australia. But I said, oh, you're from Southern Alberta. She's like, no, I'm Australian. And I'm like, I'm kidding. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. uh, but she, she's just totally over her That's head. So but good. I just wanted to tease you with that. Yeah, that's nice. It was funny. I was like, uh, another yeah. Pinch Creeker? What the heck? No. <laughs> she's from Australia, but uh, it's going to be a good time here. Uh, a couple of texts to wrap things up. Tommy Rubella says, uh, the Golden Knights beating Columbus is a bit sketchy. Knights are built for the playoffs. Literally half of it uh, and their playoff payroll can't play until the playoffs uh, and then four between periods entertainment. The Hudson's needs a Vander Van versus tube socks. Macromala intro off. That would be something. Give some, give those guys the PA microphone. And uh, Oh, I like this because they were talking about it with DVD from NHL.com that on the pregame show on the TV side uh, on hockey night, they had McDavid versus Matthews and uh, the picture comes in from a listener, no name on it, has all the hardware McDavid has won, Art Ross trophies, Hart trophies, Lester, Lester B. Pearson, now known as Ted Lindsay's, a rocket. And then it has uh, the hardware that Matthews has picked up in his time in the NHL, which is amazing, but it's it's nowhere near the same as what uh, Connor McDavid has done so far. Neither one of them, I should say, have that big, beautiful silver chalice beside their name yet yet uh another text says uh have a great time est guys and nasties that are at hudson's that's from joel thank you joel maple jed says uh shout out to Vinny, first player from the seventh round of his draft class to play 100 games uh day harnay back in action tonight great stat there from maple jed what else do we have going on in the nasty chat uh richard is here he's Oh, he popped in. He was one of the early ones to get here. Dennis says, let's go, Oilers. Newbie here from Long Island. Dennis, welcome. We're going to put that on our Edmonton Sports Talk map. We're going to pin it. I'll make sure Zach to come gets on that. And then Jason the Acadia says, let's go, Oilers. Just arrived at Hudson's for the second leg of this crazy sports day. All right, Jason the Acadian, uh, X-Ray J, lots of thumbs up emojis. Great to see. And uh, hit that thumbs up button. We appreciate it so much. That is going to do it for the Oil Stream pregame show live here at Hudson's White Avenue. It's the EST Watch Party. Come on down if you got nothing better to do and want to have fun watching the Oilers and the Leafs. Does Hyman get to his 50th goal tonight? I think so. He's playing with McDavid and Dreisaitl in his hometown. We shall see. Big thank you to Nick Alberga from Leafs Morning Tea as well as uh, DVD from NHL.com for Matty Cassian and YouTube Trev. I'm Tom Gazzola saying enjoy the game. We'll see you on the post-game show.